what's up world it's prophet google peace be upon me i'm back with another video on today's list we have the top 10 lies told by scholars whose teachings just don't seem to add up to what the sources say is it true or just a lie you be the judge make sure to hit the like and subscribe button click on the notification bell so you can get updates on new videos posted also follow me on patreon for exclusive content now let's get to the video starting at number 10 mut'a is temporary the marriage the time of the prophet uzul means interruption of the sexual act and muta muta means temporary marriage this is your prophet saying any man any woman they want to if each other for one or two or three nights they can uh, uh, sorry my voice is tired uh, we were live for many hours in Badr Akam. So, if they want to have, and look, the Muslim, they say here in the first translation, marriage. So, if it's marriage, why you get offended? If I say you son of Muta, and Muta is marriage, you will not be offended. But now you got your prophet busted. You agreed that Muta is a prostitution. And when somebody says to you, son of Muta, he is saying your, your mother, she was doing one night stand and for money, not even for one night stand, for money. Number nine. Nikah means marriage. What is the proper way of doing nikah? The proper way in Islam for marriage, nikah is marriage. The word here is not marriage. The word here is nikah. So the man, he took the woman and she became lawful for him. He pay her dowry and then he do nikah to her, not marry her. This is the physical act. And then here he says, uh, the husband would sleep with her. The husband would sleep with her if he wished. Her husband did, i.e., that fair five sleep with the man. Uh, this is about the Arab. They used to exchange wives. On they used to sleep with each other wives. And this is why the Quran says to Muhammad, uh, uh, if, you, if your wife don't behave, we are going to exchange them for you. All right? So, all the word nikah here is appear is about sexual relationship. Number eight, the Prophet never hit his wives. How can you ignore what Aisha herself said in Sahih al-Bukhari when she said, I swear by Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi never raised his hand against a woman or even a servant. Here is Sheikh al-Habib quoting a narration from Sahih Bukhari, which the so-called Prophet hits Aisha with a close fist. Sorry, Yasukari, there's holes in your narrative. قال قلت يا رسول الله بأبي أنت وأمي فأخبرته بينت له ما هو قال فأنت السواد الذي رأيت أمامي لأنه كان الأمر في جوف الليل وشاهد سوادا يتحرك قلت نعم فلهدني في صدري لهدة أو جعتني هذا الصدر واللهدة الضرب بجمع الكف هذا الكف اجمعه شنو يصير يصير بوكس فرسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله شنو سوى سلام عليكم ورحمة الله شنو سوى بوكس انطل عائشة في صدرها number seven the bible has been corrupted proof that bible is incompatible with modern science Chapter 3, verse number 3, it says it clearly from the first, from the beginning of the Quran, that it is Allah who sent the Torah and He is the one who sent the Gospel. As long as the Muslims agree and admit that this is a book sent by their God, which we don't believe in Him anyway, but this is what they believe, so they bid Him with, with their belief. As long as it is Allah who sent the Gospel, as you see, to Jesus. And Allah, He sent the Torah to Moses. That means this is the book of Allah. Now the question here should return to the Muslims. 
Why your God Allah cannot protect his book if this is his book? Number six, Isa is Jesus. His name shall be the Christ, Isa, Jesus. May peace be upon him, the son of Mary. We hear Muslims speaking always about Jesus and they claim that Jesus is a prophet in Islam and he is a Muslim. First of all, the name Jesus never exists, period, in Islam. And when I'm talking about Jesus here, I'm not talking about the Latin name. I'm talking about the name, not only the Latin, the Latin does not exist, the Hebrew does not exist, even the Arabic name of Jesus does not exist. I am an Arab and the name of Jesus in the Bible is Yeshua. We never, never, ever call Jesus Isa, not a single Christian in history. You will not find one historian Christian book ever wrote Isa. Number five, Mary is the daughter of Amran, the father of Moses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared the mother of Jesus, may peace be upon him, very, very carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared her by her prior to her birth being dedicated by her mother for the place of worship and for ensuring that she will be dedicated. She had made this promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not knowing that she was bearing a female child. But when the female child came, they fulfilled the promise. She was born an orphan, meaning the father Imran, who was a very, very pious man, had passed away. And here you see actually in chapter 66 verse number 12 the Quran says and Mary the daughter of Amran so this is a very clear announcement from the Quran that Mary is a daughter of a man his name is Amran not only this is a mistake because it's a contradiction with the uh, uh, older bi uh, uh, books which is exist before Islam saying that this name is not correct it is uh, a proof that Muhammad is a false person because if we go in the hadith and uh, I choose this website, <coughs> sorry actually, <coughs> I choose this website because this website showing you if the hadith is correct or not. Look with me in here, if you see uh, uh, down, you will see with me this. It says down in here, Hadith Sahih. So if Abdul wanna come to me and say, oh this is a weak hadith, this is a hadith uh, miss vitamin A and B and D and C and F and M and M, 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 you know, it doesn't work. All right, this is a correct hadith approved by your scholars. It says Sahih. Look what your prophet is saying. That Harun is a son of Umran, which mean Muhammad he think that Harun, his father is Umran, Mary, her father is Umran, and this is why he called Mary the sister of Aaron. Number four, Aisha was 18 when she married and the some Prophet. some Muslims are still asking questions like, why did the Prophet Sallallahu marry Aisha when she was, you know, I don't know, seven, eight, nine? Why did he marry a child? And, you know, people are using this to attack Islam and to attack Muslims. And the funny part is that we as Muslims are becoming agents in the perpetuation of this rumor. Um, it is not true. The Prophet ﷺ did not marry Aisha when she was a child. She was an adult and she was at least 18. <laughs> Lawfully, she is his wife. Officially. Do you see it? And he did have sex with her intercourse at the age of nine. And she had no menstruation even at the age of four 14 and she was playing with her friends with her dolls and this guy what he is saying he refuted us number three jabril is the holy spirit one there are verses and hadiths about the holy spirit being the angel gabriel so one way of understanding what the Holy Spirit is, it's one of God's greatest angels. You are the one who chose this verse for me, right? Yeah. Okay, do you know Do you know how dangerous this verse you chose for me? Uh, what do you mean? Well, you just said the angels and the Spirit, correct? Uh, 
Yeah. Okay, if the angels are the spirit, then we should not say the angels and the spirit. Well, that's that's besides the point. It's no, 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 no. It's not beside the point. You are the one who quote for me this verse to say to me that Jibril is a spirit, and this is the same verse proving that Jibril cannot be a spirit because if Jibril is a spirit, then Allah cannot say, should not say, the angels and the spirit. Number two, the prophet was most trustworthy. Rasul وسلم, as a young man, never. Drank. <laughs> he, he grew up in Mecca and Jahiliya, where people used to drink, where people used to commit adultery and function. Never thought of it. One time he said, when I was a little boy, maybe his uh, adolescent or say teenager, he said he thought about going to watch people having a party while alcohol being served. He thought about it. He said. He said, I said to my, he was a shepherd taking care of the sheep, he said to his uh, um, uh, the company, the young man with him, watch my sheep, I'm going to see what those people are doing there. He said, I'm going to my way, I felt asleep. He said, when I woke up, it was the party was over. Even he did not attend that. Allah did not allow him. <laughs> Why? He's the seal of the prophet. No corruption, the mind has to be clear. And never lied even once since he was a child. Never even once. He did not lie even once in his childhood. <laughs> it, it, imagine, as a young man, teenagers, and so forth, he might, you know, said, let me try this and try that. He never lied. He was trustworthy, even when he was young. People used to trust him with things. Have you ever heard of a God? He make a verse to defend that the prophet is not the one who stole an underwear. I mean, guys, look at this. We are debating with the Muhammadan about if Jesus is God or not. Do you see the quality? People, Muslims, do you see what we are debating about? When we debate with Muslims, we are debating about a child molester, filthy, criminal. Uh, even the Quran speak about the Muslims accuse him of stealing underwears. Before we get to number one, let us take time to thank our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Number one. Muhammad is the best of mankind. And the best. Example. The role model for the person who was the most Allah-centered is the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best example of a person who is Allah-centered and a mercy only for the Muslims. He was the mercy for the whole of humankind. Why did your Prophet Muhammad break all the Ten Commandments? Why did Muhammad, if yes, if God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, why did Muhammad break all the Ten Commandments and got away with it? Well, let me sum it up for you. Muhammad came with a different God called Allah. The Jews never knew about Allah. They never heard of Allah. That's number one. Number two, according with the one of the Ten Commandments is respect your parents. But Muhammad called his parents Nedges, which means dirty. Right? Our God of the Bible is not Allah. Muhammad called his parents Nedges. Number three. Let me continue. Number three. Muhammad killed at least 900 Jews on one day. Some people say 1,000. Let's go with 900. Let, let me try to be political correct. So here I just showed you at least three commandments that Muhammad broke. The commandments of God himself that were given to Moses. Number four. Number four. Let me continue. Muhammad robbed caravans. Muhammad robbed caravans. God said, don't steal. So Muhammad broke four 
of the Ten Commandments. You see? Do you want me to continue or are four broken commandments enough? Do you want me to continue? Please say yes. Right? <laughs> you see guys? He has no legs to stand on. Right? He has no legs to stand on because Muhammad he broke all of the Ten Commandments. All of them. Not one, not two, but all ten he broke them. And they call him a prophet. Clearly, we can conclude that Muhammad is a fake, false prophet who created Islam for his own political ideology, for his power and sex desires. And that's about it. That's about it, guys. Muhammad is a fake prophet. Mike Free. Yes, um, uh, SL, SL, my friend, uh, SL653, you said not only did he break them, but he taught people to break them too. Yes, exactly. Not only did he break the Ten Commandments, but he told his Sahaba, his followers, to also break the Ten Commandments. That makes him a even more worse and fake prophet, right? That we can conclude for the second time Muhammad is a false prophet and the Sahaba are following a false satanic prophet. Mike Free.